In today's video, are you carbohydrate sensitive? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and today's video topic we're going to talk about carb sensitivity. Are you carb sensitive? Are you someone who struggles feeling like they cannot have carbohydrates? We're going to talk about why that might be, how to resolve it, and we're going to talk about this demonized thing called insulin. And before we get started with today's video, I do have to mention it's Black Friday. So if you go to CoreNutritionals.com today and use my code PaulR20, you're going to get 25% off your purchases. So check that out if you're interested in some supplements. But let's get into today's topic. Today's question comes from my Instagram direct message. So if you would like to send me a question, I'll put it on the screen here. You send me a direct message and I'm going to read it so we can talk about the question. I am trying my very best to lose belly fat and build muscle at the same time. I don't know if I am sensitive to carbs or not. I have tried every diet possible and still not getting the body I want. My question is, what is the best macro split to have for my goals? My stats are 5'9", 260, body fat around 20%. I'm a big boned and have been working out for 20 years. I'm hoping you can help me out. Well, thank you, Jason, for the great question. Um, and what we're going to talk about today is the specifics of are you carb sensitive? What are the, some of the things that we can look for? And should we be making some changes to our lifestyle in accordance with that? And one of the big things that we hear all the time is insulin. We should avoid foods that cause an insulin to be spiked because that is going to be bad. And I'm going to explain why that's not necessarily a bad thing. And before we get started, let's talk about what carb sensitivity means. I hear people complain sometimes that when they increase their carbohydrates, they get tired, you know, they'll maybe post meal, they get a little bit sleepy, and that's certainly something that you should pay attention to. Also, you might notice either some bloating or kind of quick fat gain when you do up your carbohydrates. And while there are some mechanisms going on there, let's talk about a few things and why that might be. For those that are aware of what insulin is, let's talk about insulin's role in our bodies. Insulin promotes protein synthesis. It moves glucose into muscle and fat cells. It regulates cellular energy. Insulin resistance manifests itself at the cellular level. So when we're looking at insulin resistance, this is where cells do not absorb as much glucose and this leads to higher blood sugar, which could explain lower energy, the higher storage of body fat. So what can we do to improve insulin sensitivity? Well, I have found through my clients that insulin sensitivity tends to get worse when a restriction of calories has been taking place for a long amount of time. But there are some other factors. You see, insulin's not bad. Insulin is actually something that promotes muscle protein synthesis. So we don't need to avoid insulin. We need to avoid insulin sensitivity. And there are a few things that research has shown and as a coach, I have found that really benefit us when it comes to insulin sensitivity and allowing us to eat carbohydrates, especially for those of us who want to like resistance train and put on some muscle. You said you want to lose fat and build muscle at the same time. Well, my friend, I have some things I want to share with you. So let's talk a little bit about what we can do. There are three things that I found both as myself, my clients, and in the research that are really going to benefit us when it comes to insulin sensitivity. The first thing is sleep. That's right. Now, a lot can be made about sleep and stress and all these things, but there's an actual study that's out there. Now, one of the things that I will say to my clients that are typically, you know, struggling with weight loss or struggling with weight gain is I'll try to get into their lives and see what's going on. And sleep for most people gets shorter and shorter as stress gets higher. So one thing that we can do is look at this study that showed that by simply adding one hour a day to our sleep, insulin sensitivity improved. So that's one trick we could focus on. Now, that might be easier said than done for those of us that have hectic lifestyles, but if you really wanna make yourself a priority, sometimes you need to make your sleep a priority. Getting to bed earlier, maybe getting up a little bit later, whatever it needs to be, getting that extra hour of sleep has shown to improve insulin sensitivity. Below, I'm going to link a study from 2018 that showed that insulin sensitivity 
might be impaired by low carbohydrate diets, which a lot of proponents of insulin issues are talking about taking carbs very, very low, but that might not be the best thing to do. A balanced approach to carbohydrates, a balanced approach to macronutrients, in my experience and what I've seen, has a much bigger impact than just completely removing carbohydrates, especially for those of us that are in physique sports, that are trying to exercise, that are doing stuff that requires the energy of our muscles. Low carbohydrates for healthy individuals might actually hurt insulin sensitivity. Another common thing I see with dieters, especially those that are like getting ready for contest prep, is that they'll really, really restrict sodium. This is something I am completely against. And what's really cool is I found a study that showed that low salt diets can increase resistance in healthy individuals. Now, what we're talking about here is a very particular situation. We're talking about healthy individuals. I'm not talking about diabetics. I'm not talking about the obese. I'm talking about people that are typically pretty healthy that are trying to change their body composition here. Now, if you're working with a doctor, all bets are off. You need to listen to your doctor. But what I see as a common trend now is a fear of carbohydrates. Whereas I coach and I express my athletes in a manner where I feel like carbohydrates have a very high value on our ability to train, our ability to recover. Now, it has to be done in a proper way, but a low sodium diet might actually impair. Meaning if you take in a little bit of sodium, you might be better able to digest and use carbohydrates in a good manner. I also found another study, which it's not very shocking, but cortisol was negatively associated with insulin sensitivity. Now, cortisol is a stress hormone, and just like the sleep study mentioned, the people that got more sleep, their insulin sensitivity actually improved. And this would make sense because possibly cortisol would lower. Cortisol, the stress hormone, can have a huge impact on the overall well-being of an individual. And this is something that I've actually learned to pay attention to as a coach with my clients. What's your overall stress levels like, okay? How is your sleep? Years past that we used to just look at a few things, calories, cardio, and expect to see changes. But when changes didn't happen, we had to start looking at lifestyle factors, other things that were going on. And so there's a few things that you can do to actually improve insulin sensitivity, like exercise is another great way to improve insulin sensitivity, moving more throughout the day. All of these factors are gonna have a positive role. And for anyone that's looking to try to find out if they are carbohydrate sensitive, an easy way is to just remove them for a few days and then gradually add them back in and see how you feel. I definitely have had clients in the past that complained once carbohydrates got to a certain level. So if we're in a building phase, what do we focus on? Well, we can start adding more fats, okay? Um, I definitely feel like protein reaches a certain threshold, but carbohydrates and fats are just fantastic for the physique athlete. So you don't need to constantly be pounding your body with carbohydrates. Carbohydrate metabolism, fat metabolism, these can also be very individual things. There's a lot of processes that are going on in our body that are gonna cause these things to vary. So it's important if you want to get the most out of your body and you wanna look the best you possibly can to first of all, be aware of what you're taking in. Be accountable. Don't just look at food and guess. Start tracking. Use an app. It's a lot easier these days to simply plug in your foods in an app and look at what you're doing and say, okay, maybe I need to make some adjustments here, okay? A proper macronutrient profile is gonna go a long way in setting you up for success. Feeling like you're carb sensitive when that might not be the issue, it might be resolved just because your ratios are out of place. And if you're looking for a free guide on flexible dieting, well, I have one on my, on my site, prophysique.com slash programs. I'll put a link below to that too, absolutely free. And I also have a calorie calculator on prophysique.com for free as well. So just trying to give you guys some good resources out there. And uh, hopefully this video helped you guys. Are you carb sensitive? Do you fear carbs? I would encourage you not to because I find them to be very beneficial. All right guys, have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.